Hey guys, Derek here with On The Horizon Podcast, and this week we're talking to guest Catherine Rice. You guys who have followed our social in the past are probably very familiar with Catherine. She brings a wealth of knowledge. Uh, she's owner of Wildcat Marketing. So this week we talk all things outdoor marketing, as well as, of course, we talk about the 22 Creedmoor. This week's episode is going to be brought to you by Texas Ammunition, which of course is your source for all 22 Creedmoor ammunition. Hope you enjoy this week's episode. Here we go. Yeah, appreciate you being on yeah. today. We, I'm super actually, excited to be here in Texas, in person. In studio. Yeah. So what do you think? Um, so it's a little bit different than, uh, you know, the last time I was in the office. How many years ago was that? Four? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's been at least. a minute. So uh, new building, a lot of growth. It's super exciting to see. New podcast room? Yes. Well, a uh, podcast room. A there pod was no <laughs> podcast. <laughs> That's true. A podcast room. <laughs> So what have you been up to? So like last time we talked a lot about Vanatic stuff. Yep. And that, you know, kind of kind of did that. And now back to On the Horizon. Yeah. And so kind of what have you what have you been working with? It's Wildcat Marketing. Um, well, you. Oh, that's true. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to take up as much of your time yeah, as possible. Yeah, I was going to say Casper Horizon Projects have taken up a fair <laughs> amount of time. Um, I love that being in the outdoor space, you and a couple other clients in the outdoor space. But actually, I'm helping a lot um, local businesses not a lot, a few, yeah. um, in my community. So And local being? Local being Eugene, outside of Eugene, actually. Oregon. Oregon yeah. yeah. So um, I... <laughs> now, is there a Eugene somewhere else? I don't know. That's a good question. I know there's a Portland somewhere else. But um, so technically, you know, I have a Eugene address, but uh, my kids all go and our community is this little community of like 5,000 people outside of Eugene. Um, and so... Which is... It's called Vanita. Vanita. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, we've got... I mean, I work with the farm store, like the local feed store. I run their social media these Dude, days. So, and... okay, I pause you there. Feed store is my like personal inner want to retire. It's game. honestly so much fun. <laughs> it's so I, much fun. I have so many good memories growing up and the smell is amazing. Yes. I do like just popping in there because I drive by there multiple times a day when I'm like dropping kids off at school or practice or picking them up. Yeah. And so it's easy to just pop in and take photos and they have shop cats, which I just <laughs> love. It's like the funnest thing they have probably four or five cats. You used to sing cats. the shop cat that Austin used to do at the old oh, building. Oh, I forgot about yeah, that. You should, you should re regenerate I the totally uh, shop should. cat i totally should but it's really fun um like creating reels for them because it, i mean there's just so much you can do and then now the reels that i get um marketed to on instagram is all like farm related or <laughs> baby goats dancing <laughs> it makes my feet a lot more fun to scroll you through. should check out goat slapping Okay. Okay. So it's a real thing. We're trying to get writers sort of. Like we were talking earlier. Write that down for me, will you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Check out Google goat slapping or YouTube goat slapping. Okay. So we're looking into getting our writer into doing some junior rodeo stuff mm -hmm. and goat slapping as a real event. And the one video that comes up on YouTube is like a little kid doing it. It's absolutely hilarious. Okay. You should watch that. Is it what it sounds like? Oh, yeah. It's exactly what it like, sounds like. It's it's <laughs> oh it's gosh. literally slapping a goat. It's amazing. <laughs> But I not like in a like cruel way, but well, yeah, it's really yeah. funny. So, okay. so what in terms of reels and stuff you're doing for them, just like just from advertising or, or yeah, I mean, just they weren't they had they have social channels, but they weren't actively using them. And so part of my job is just getting the local community used to interacting with them or even seeing them pop up in their feed. They have a fair good, a fairly good following. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, but then they have they actually do a really great job. Um, they have promotions set up monthly. They know exactly what they're doing, so they share that with me, and I just help push it out on social But cool. and then fill in the gaps with what goes with those promotions and campaigns. So, like, they are selling um, seed packets and, um, like, vegetable starts right now. But they also sell – and actually, as a local community member, I didn't even know. Like, they do delivery. Hmm. I had no idea. They do curbside pickup. Didn't hey, know that. And that's, like, yeah. that's pretty revolutionary for right. a feed store. Yeah. For a feed store in a community of like 5,000 people. But they also <laughs> like sell dirt by the yard and gravel. I had no idea. Hmm. So it's, you know, educating the. So what have you, so what have you learned? So think about the outdoor space and yeah. marketing in that piece. What, what's the crossover look like in terms of clientele or is there any? I mean, it's a similar, similar clientele for sure. I mean, a lot of people that live that country life partake in things in the outdoors. Yep. But, you know, you also have to think of it like I, if it was my feed store, I'd probably run social a little bit differently than 
yep. how I'm doing it for them just because of who they are as um, owners, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you gotta, so you I got to play brand, that line. Right? Yeah. But that's one thing that I've been busy with and then just helping actually even a local um, mechanic as well. Okay. Um, Man, so and you're getting like a fun. plethora. But of so things. it's like, but it's small businesses and helping them. Like they they know they need to market, but they don't have any idea how to do it. Yeah. Um, so we talked about that I think a little bit last time in yeah. your last podcast. You know, if you were to look at it now, how has the landscape changed or similar? What would you say? I know we, we talked to um, in a in a different podcast with Austin just in terms of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So what would you recommend to somebody trying to get started in a local community in terms of what's their best bang for their buck on the marketing side? Um, what I'm saying, well, in the community that we're in, um, businesses that support the local community mm. do great and we're really engaged. So like, uh, for the mechanic, we just, just maybe like two years moved into a new building. The community went wild when I posted pictures of literally just lines being painted in the parking lot. Oh, like the you. engagement rate <laughs> for, um, for that specific social channel, I mean, we don't have a ton of followers. So our community is small. They have, I don't know, 700 followers, which yeah. has grown, I mean, a significant growth since yeah, I, yeah. I started helping them uh, like three years ago. But um, like they have a 50% engagement rate in, on their social, which in f organically, like yeah, yeah. all totally organic, which is unheard of right now. Um, hmm. in the social media world. So and that, it's and interesting. And it's kind of hard. Like, and we've tried here locally, you know, to get involved in the chamber of commerce and mm -hmm. those kind of things in terms of, you know, switching from college station to Brian, yeah. which really is just moving across the tracks more, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> literally here. across the tracks. Literally across the railroad <laughs> tracks. But, you know, so it's, uh, it's interesting you say that because we have kind of noticed the same thing. It's like, uh, we were talking and I want, you know, I want to talk a little bit about it today. It's just like with podcasts, like mm -hmm. why are people so interested in other people talking? Right. So, yeah. Well, so with that, I mean, what, what kind of, uh, I know we, we talked a little bit offline here, but what kind of podcasts are you listening to currently? So I don't really listen to any consistently, but the two that I do listen to, like if I'm going to go on a walk or whatever, um, one is two best friends that just chat. They've been friends for a long time. They used to have YouTube. Well, I guess they still technically have YouTube channels, but they don't make Maybe. YouTube. They're not, that's not their full-time job anymore. Yeah. Um, and it's just, basically it's their weekly date to make sure that they hang out and catch up. That's a good idea. Um, yeah. That's, that's, a re that's a really good idea. Um, and f I think most of their following is people that used to subscribe to their YouTube channels and like got invested in their life, you yeah. know? Um, and then the other one is um, a husband and wife that, I mean, they have semi-similar they have a strong marriage. They talk about marriage stuff. They talk about mental health. They talk about raising kids. Their kids are teenagers, and um, I have a teenager, so it. We don't yet. We're looking at like we're we're starting to do some parenting classes and stuff yeah. with the church, uh, looking at those people with teenagers, and slightly terrified just a little bit. Um, it's pretty great actually. I love Big Kid Land, okay. and I can say my mom was like, "Oh, good luck," you know. Yeah. And I was like, what, what do you mean? My kid's great. I was probably terrible. I don't know. But like, um, I have a pretty great relationship with, uh, it's not without its challenges, of course, but yeah. you know, I wouldn't say I go into parenting, like I'm not my kid's best friend. Um, but I want them to be able to talk to me about stuff, you know? Yeah. And so far that seems, I'd knock on wood, but this is a cement table, but so far that seems to be working pretty well. So what are the um, kids into now? Oh gosh. So my oldest Riley, um, she is a freshman in high school. Golly. Right? I mean, the last time you saw her, she was 10. Yeah, and I was looking through our YouTube. We did like a, um, uh, you know, how to bore out your rifle. Mm -hmm. That which, was that weekend. Which, I mean, that had to have been six years ago. She maybe? was she was 10. You shot, yeah. you okay. showed her how to shoot, and then yep. she shot the twenty two Creed. She did. And she still has that target hanging on her bedroom wall. It was an amazing group, by the oh, way. Oh, it was. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, she was such a good shot. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so she plays basketball. She actually lettered. Uh, varsity lettered wow. as a freshman. She got to swing up to the varsity team and played enough to get her wow. letter. So she was pretty stoked about that. And now she's doing track. So you're like super sports mom. Oh gosh. All three kids are in sports. So at any given time, we usually have three to five sports going. <laughs> um, so it actually works out really well that I own my own business now. Yeah. So I can just, I mean, I've done SEO reports from a basketball gym, like, cause I had to drop them off an hour before the game and, but I still had to work. So, so you're, but you've been, you've been doing remote for 
or yeah, remote I mean, when I first years. started for Horizon was when I started working remote. So that kind was a trendsetter. 2016. Yeah, people were like, oh, how is it? You know, when yeah. COVID shut everything down. I was like, uh, I've already been doing this for four years. No different, <laughs> you so, know? So what's what do you think the difference? Because I know we, we've tried um, we've tried a lot of remote work. And yeah. I know people who have tried to be remote. And it just doesn't work in all occasions. It doesn't occasions. work for everybody. And it doesn't work for all occasions. One thing I did notice a significant shift from when, like, I always worked remote with you to COVID and everybody working remote, um, video calls all of a sudden were yeah. the thing. And I'm like, I've been doing this four years. I don't need video calls for everything. <laughs> like we've talked on the phone. There was like one sales guy in particular that we had talked a few times a year for multiple years in a row, just on the phone. Yeah. And then all of a sudden our next call was a Zoom. And I was like, do, uh, okay, yeah. like let's do a Zoom call again. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's an interesting point. Cause like when I mean, pre, pre COVID, it was really Scott tech, like I said, yeah. call, um, and then it's, it is interesting that now all of a sudden everybody needs to see each other Yeah, to make yeah. sure, you know, make sure you're there. But it's also, right. I've, I've found Zoom calls so funny because it's like, I feel like we do them all the time, mm -hmm. but you only get really this much of somebody. So yeah. I don't know that you're really reading the room that much different. I 100% than... wear sweatpants every day. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a little... Hey, but you. Was, can, I have my work sweatpants, and then I have my. It's like mullet dress, sweatpants. right? Business exactly. on the top. <laughs> Sometimes it's not even business on the top. I'm like, <laughs> I don't. That is one that I just like. Just don't care as much anymore. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I still care, but. So do you feel do you feel like most of your clients <clears throat> when you're doing like with the feed store mm -hmm. are you Zoom? Oh no, con? really? Mm -mm. I just, Although the mechanic, I am. Interesting. Yeah, I'll have. I've had a, a couple of different Zoom calls, but we live ten minutes apart. Like, yeah. Um, but his shop isn't set up in such a way that it's easy to take in-person meetings there um but they're another one i will just swing by and like pop out to the shop floor and whatnot and just catch up with them because i'm friends with them like the who yeah he used to be the shop foreman he was the very first employee is now the manager oh that's cool. inside so he's gone from the shop floor into the office and our kids all have gone to school together like his middle child and my middle child were born two weeks apart and have been going to school together since they were you know 10 weeks old 12 weeks right. old. So um, that's also local, fun just local. to catch up. Yeah, way local. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think is why it works so well um, Yeah, on social. But So talking about, you know, doing podcasts and, you know, like I said, kind of intro with you being more involved in, in our team. Yes. and kind of. So what can we talk about that we're working on currently? You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> you should know way better than me. Um, Nothing. So, so tell me, tell me what, <laughs> what is the dream team? What are we doing here? And why are people going to be seeing more of Kat um, and more involvement on our social? So group? can I just say that I'm so actually so excited to be back here and working with awesome. you again because it's a lot of this stuff that you and I had kind of set this and Austin you know, yep. set this foundation for five years ago. It's, it's taken a little while, but it's kind of starting to come to fruition. So it was really, really cool that y'all called me back and were like, it's time. We need you back. We need, we need to do this. <laughs> and that's, you know, it's kind of kind of funny, you know, Austin and I were talking. Um, it's like when you start a business, is that normal, right? Like, mm -hmm. like um, how do you encourage somebody as a, as a startup to, you know, where to invest in and to, you know, continue to see way out there, but then it ends up being like timing. So like we, we, we talk quite a yeah. bit, like if we were doing these things that we're doing now, then would they've really been accepted? Right. You know, I don't know. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, we've joked a lot, you and I, like we were just ahead of our time because how many ideas did we have, yep. you know, four or five years ago that um, people are doing now? It's like, right. dang it. But, right. you know, we didn't have um, the resources to pull anything like that off. Yeah. So, so um, what do you so what do you tell somebody? Hey, do you go go all in on X, Y, Z idea it, or do you tell them, hey, just slow growth until you can get there and keep it in the pocket? Like, and that's that's what we were really I struggling mean, with. Now, if we would have had the resources then and buy in and all of that to like go in on some of these crazy ideas we had back then. Yeah. Um, would we have rev revolutionized the industry? I don't, I don't know. know. It's hard to tell, right? Yeah. So what do you, you know, and, and, and you know, it's interesting too, we talk about like podcasts, we're seeing, you know, so much more information uh, being shared in this format yeah. versus like, I mean, outdoor television. I mm -hmm. can't think, um, I know, mean, what's your opinion on that? It seems like that is a rough part of the industry yeah. currently. Yeah. That's my, uh, also, <laughs> that's my professional opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, yeah, be. I can't say don't do it because there's still that pocket of the industry that, but, you know, there's shows that are like simultaneously 
releasing episodes on that work and then the next week they're or however you know yeah. whatever their rights are but putting it on youtube later and so yeah. they're still you know parallel pathing well, but and, and i don't I would, know and it's hard i would love to if people if you want to comment below you know on this video or send us an email i'd love to know kind of where people are you know watching or or engaging in outdoor mm -hmm. activities and at the same time um you know what kind of format or content like to see so yeah. you know we've been working through this and we'll talk a little bit about it but on this kind of what we call a dream team project yeah um trying to capture some of that video and it's really interesting to think about um you know oh was it about capturing the hunt well i don't know it's been done a lot right yeah you yeah. know or and is there really any way you can do that differently right yeah Right. And, and the other thing is, is uh, I mean, like we were talking about Ronella and Meat Eater and what they've done there. Mm -hmm. It's always interesting that you can watch that show and in this, an entire season, they may actually only harvest two animals out of Oh, 20. seriously? See, yeah, I've never watched. Crazy. I've never been a consumer of outdoor television. Yeah. So it's, um, but, and it's so, hard and that's because I get thing. this like cliffhanger moment. I'm like, oh, maybe this episode is actually <laughs> is the one the where one? he's going yeah. to harvest something. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's really interesting to see you know, kind of how, how media is, is changed. Well, yeah. And just the landscape and social media in general too. So, you know, but gosh, how long ago did we work at Botech together? Oof, it's been a while. I don't want to talk about that. It's been a minute, right? That means we're old, <laughs> but, um, social media wasn't around. I mean, it was, I had yeah. Facebook, but not, um, do, do we, so that had been, so here's, here's the thing. Uh, Facebook uh, back then, gosh, yeah, back then, like 07, um, 07, 07, yeah, yeah. Um, brands and non-college students were just getting able to mm, um, that's right. have the, not even brands. They didn't have it. brand pages. So when I worked at Botech still, we created a Facebook profile for Botech and people like, could as an friend individual? us. Yes. Like we were a person because <laughs> pages were Did you have like yet. a dot, you know, um, a college address or something? Or no, how did, it, was, it was, everybody right could do it, sure. but, um. Yeah, that and so to go from that to where it's at today, and yeah. it's insane. It's and it's also um, kind of censored, right? Yeah. So sensitive material if it's hunting. So that's the other thing you have to keep in mind with, yeah. you know, what we're posting and how we're posting it is like anything's going to get flagged, right? And it's super interesting to me because I, I should have known this and like being in like the marketing piece, it should have been something that I thought about more, but it was sort of a passive thought for me. We were uh, with a friend who's very much in the tech world, mm -hmm. kind of like IT guy, completely opposite, right? We grew up completely opposite. Yeah. We're interested in completely opposite things. And it's like, his world, my world, but it's been in interesting to learn about that. And so we uh, were on a ski trip together. We opened up our phones. We're like, hey, let's let's just see what we're so being. So like scrolled Yeah, like let's just side. see what we're being fed. Yeah. Like my stuff is all hunting stuff or there is how to do this in roping or mm -hmm. picking this horse or whatever. And his is like this comedian or this website development. And so Interesting. I, don't, I don't know that you like, I don't know how to make your stuff show up on somebody's feed yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we need to talk about that. <laughs> um, but it's interesting to see that you're like, you're being fed content. Oh, 100%. And I can realize. see it. I skew it all the time because I'm using my own personal accounts most of the time um, to like search for reels to share on my other clients or posts and whatnot. And so the amount of I mean, the broad range I was, you know, I talked about a few minutes ago, like dancing goats that I get fed and like chicken reels <laughs> and whatnot. We'll have to plug in a dancing goat reel here during the video of the podcast. I need to see that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I actually, I made one. Um, so I literally just got like a stock video off of Adobe stock of a goat that's like jumping around. Yeah. And there was this trending audio um, that businesses had access to that was like today's gonna be a good day gonna be a good day and so I, and that stupid thing um has the most views out of all the reels that the farm store has ever posted yeah, it's hilarious <laughs> Hey guys, have you found that finding hunting ammo the last couple years has been incredibly difficult? Let me let you in on a little secret. Check out TexasAmmunition.com. Texas Ammunition has a wide variety of pistol and rifle cartridges, some of your favorite hunting rounds, including our specialized 22 Creedmoor, great pricing, easy to get, quick shipping. Check them out at TexasAmmunition.com and you'll be super happy you did. Now, back to the show. Well, um, so we are coming up on a, oh, oh, wait, yeah, it is time for the 22 minute, 
22 Creedmoor Hot Round. Oh, let's do it. So here's what we're going to do. Do we have 22 questions? We have 22 questions. I like it. And they're moderately the same between each person we do. Okay. And so it's going to be lightning round style because the 22 Creedmoor is fast. And Uh, we all... Ah, see, yeah. I like it. So here we go. What's your favorite animal to hunt? Oh, blacktail. Blacktail. Oh, gosh. That was on my list. I have still non-successful there. What is your favorite caliber? Uh, my personal, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, What's, what do you personally use? 243. Mm, good one. Good one. First deer ever taken was the, was the 243. Do you like to fly or drive places when you vacation? Oh, drive. Me too. Coolest gear you've seen lately? In the hunting space? Period. I need some, I need cool stuff across the world. Um, pass. <laughs> pass. You cannot, you <laughs> I don't cannot know. pass in a lightning round. I don't cool. <laughs> Um, no, I seriously. Okay, we're gonna come back to that one. We're gonna come back to that one. So, think about that. What's your favorite fast food restaurant? Oh, Taco Bell. Taco Bell, yes. So far, that is the leading answer. Really? Everybody, yep. People hate it, but I love it so much. (laughs) What is your favorite trophy? Like animal? Trophy animal? Trophy, period. Leave it it up for interpretation. Uh, the one hanging above my computer that we Uh, took on Agarita. Yes, yes. South Texas Whitetail. Yeah, my that South Texas great. Whitetail. That's fun. Um, beach or mountains? Mountains. I hate sand. That also is like, currently 100%. With every ounce of my being, I hate sand. Yeah, me too. I hate the salt water worse, though. Uh, European or shoulder mountain? Ooh, Euro. Mm, that's very trendy. Uh, one I'm sur- just cheap. <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. Do you have bedazzle on it or is it just Oof, straight? No. Okay. No, straight right. skull. What is one survivor item that you're taking with you? Fire starter. Hmm. What kind of fire starter? There's a debate right now. Is Pyro Putty worth it or not? Oh, you haven't seen Pyro Putty. That's your nope. homework when you go home. Okay. Describe your hunting style. Spot and stock. Hmm. You almost have to in Oregon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't even know there were other hunting styles until I started working at Botech, <laughs> honestly. What's your favorite camo pattern? Um. Oh, man. I have a mixed bag of camo. Um, What's your favorite? Like looks, yeah. I really like Sitco. Me too. Mm-hmm. Favorite sports team to watch? My kids' sports teams. <laughs> what is what, what is uh, so in in their, your kids' sports team? What's their name? Do they have like crazy names? Oh, it depends. So like the high schooler only. I mean, plays oh. for the high school. So the Falcons, okay. Okay. and then my daughter, middle daughter, um, plays her traveling softball team is the Crushers. The Crushers, that mm-hmm. is classic. And then my son's team, I mean, he's eight, so it's like his basketball season, they were the Nighters. I don't even know what that means. So, you know, sometimes some, they're like the Purple Pandas. <laughs> really? Exactly. I was about to say, we've got some friends who their son just started T-ball, and they are the Chicken Nuggets. Yeah, exactly. It's so random. So, <laughs> what is one thing in your hunting pack that doesn't belong there? Oh, I gotta think in my hunting bag. Um, that doesn't belong. Yeah, everything belongs. I have a purpose for everything in there. Oh, okay. All I'm right. an overpacker for That's sure, fair. but I've got a reason for it. <laughs> your your hunting pack weighs 20 pounds, but fair. Okay. Right, but I just fair. leave it in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Spotting scope, or binoculars. Oh, binos. Favorite hunting snack. Cliff bar. Okay, what flavor cliff bar? Well. Usually just the cool mint because that's the ones my kids also eat. <laughs> so by default. Okay. Okay. Solo or guided hunts? Uh, solo. I've never been on a guided hunt unless you count you with the South Texas We're not going to count that. Not okay. that great nope, again. <laughs> <laughs> hand load or factory ammo? Uh, well, I don't hand load. So factory. There you go. What, uh, if you had, if you could be any animal, what would you be? Oh, come on. Everybody's got their their animal. Do they? Oh yeah, been surprised actually. That question, people huh. have a very quick answer for that. I do not have a quick answer for that. That's something I haven't really thought about. I guess when I was younger, I would have said a horse. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, favorite wild game dish? Oh, just venison backstrap, classic. Classic, just seared steak mm-hmm. style. Okay. You're gonna bread it in flour and then pan fry it. Oh, it's so a pan fry. Huh? Oh, See, yeah. that's completely different to me. And then I make a little gravy with the meat drippings and have it on biscuits. We actually oh, had that so the good. other night with elk. It was amazing. Yeah. Last book you've read? Oh, I just finished one the other day. What was it called? Uh, Best served hot. It like. Okay. 
It's <laughs> not recommended. No, or... it's, uh, it's a mom book for sure. It's just like a romantic comedy book. I read it in like three days. So I have a. So I are you normally a, a rom com girl? Or are you reading these like like is that your style? I keep. I tried. I'm trying a new thing where one. I, up until about six months ago, I'd say, I'm not a reader. I don't like reading. And so I'm trying to, like, force myself to get into reading for funsies. Okay, um, okay. So I'm trying to go back and forth between, like, uh, fiction and then, like, a nonfiction business development, personal development kind of. So we had this debate in our house because I don't like to read. Mm -hmm. or like, not that I don't like to read. I love book content. But, yeah. like, physically reading, not my jam. Mm -hmm. Audible. Well, Love I can't it. do it. You can't, can't do, do it. Are you serious? I will not comprehend or remember anything that I've heard. That is interesting. I need it physically in front of me. Oh, I, I'm like at 1.7 speed. Let's just Oh, 1.7. On. No, yeah. couldn't, couldn't do it. So, uh, that's also the same reason that I will write, handwrite my notes as opposed to typing or like my to-do list is handwritten. It's, I can't get behind a digital to-do list. So. so what, is it appropriate? This was our debate in our house. Is it appropriate to say, I just finished reading this book. When technically, I literally just finished listening to this Can't book. you just say, I just finished this book? Ooh, just good Just a little call. more open-ended. Good mm -hmm. call. See, okay. That's yeah. that's a good I point. Just, the, the most recent book I finished. I just finished this book. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to mm -hmm. use that one. Camelback or Now Jean? Neither. Okay. Unpack that for me. How do you carry your water? Uh, in a hydro flask or a Yeti. Okay. Hydro flask. What exactly is a hydro flask? It's just a different version of a Yeti. Okay. All right. I've never <laughs> heard of that brand. term. It sounds They're based out fancy. of Oregon. So, um, is that a company that you work with? No. Okay. Oh, gosh, no. They had and have since been acquired by a huge company, you know, like a company that's as big as Yeti or Stanley or whatever. It, it's cool. But it's more like the mom yoga style. They're based in Bend. So mm -hmm. um, they're, they're like the fake outdoorsies or <laughs> the... I'll have to check the the fancy, the yuppie outdoor people. So they think, are a yuppie yeti. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. A yuppie yeti. That is a great way to describe it. They should use it. that. If they use that I don't think social. they're going to use that. They might say it's a little <laughs> bit of a negative connotation, but um, yeah, that's usually. And then our final question that wraps oh, okay. up our 22 Creamware round. Have you shopped the 22 Creamware? As a matter of fact, I have. You have. You I were with have. us when we started the 22 Creamware, I believe. Uh, just right after. Afterwards. I'm pretty sure that I harvested the very first Oregon Blacktail with the 22 Creamware. That is a good point. Mm -hmm. I forgot that about 2018? that. Was that 2018? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so tell, so with that, oh, you can always have a train here. Total Maybe classy. you should make a train noise as your 22 that's minute. A great, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah. Because... We're in Bryan College Station, so it's mm -hmm. part of the culture. Actually, I kind of like it, but it does interrupt sometimes. So you probably hear that. Uh, and it might actually shake everything. Are you serious? Just, just a small bit. Not a lot. <laughs> it depends on which side of the tracks it, it comes down. So we're talking about the 22 Creedmoor, and we can't talk about everything with the 22 Creedmoor right mm -hmm. now. But with our dream team piece, what are people, what are we expecting to see now? You're kind of taking back over social media, right? I don't brands. know, am I? Yes. Sweet. So, okay. congratulations, Kat. You're going to hey. be taking over the social media. <laughs> Did y'all miss me? Yeah, for Casper <laughs> Outdoors. So, for everybody who's who's you know seen our social lately, we've tried. We haven't been majorly successful with it. Um, and so, Kat's coming back to take control of that again. And so, let's talk about direction we're going to be going this year. Or really, the next 18 to 24 months. Okay. What is our focus for social media, and marketing for Casper Outdoors? Well, one, consistency. Just Absolutely. Just doing anything. So less of Derek's random reels and more of this is what's going on. This is what's going on. I think that um, one of my favorite things to do back in the day was to share cool rifle projects and stories. And um, I feel like there hasn't been a whole lot of that lately. So, you know, getting back into sharing rifles, sharing what's going on outside or down on the floor. I don't know. People like the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. You know, more of this. One of the things that I loved about what you and I did together was education based. Yes. Um, I feel like you did a great job. Like you are a wealth of knowledge and I have grown up hunting and shooting uh, recreationally. And so I have this baseline, baseline knowledge with an uh, yearning to, to know more yeah. and you, so I just ask you questions all the time. <laughs> Man, I tell you, it's, <laughs> no. so, it's so hard because, you know, um, you know, for me, it's like, I, you want to share some of that, but it's like mm -hmm. always, 
it's always interesting how you share it, right? Because mm -hmm. the, the industry has just gotten so opinionated, right? It's like everybody yeah. knows everything. It's really interesting. We were, you know, with the 22 Creed more, it, obviously that's something we're putting a lot of focus on this year. It's something that we- It's a re-energized focus. Yeah, it's yeah. something we've really pioneered and mm -hmm. we kind of came out this year and said, man, this is something that's extremely important to us yeah. and something we want to focus on and, and educate. And it's kind of our, um, I feel like it's sort of our, contribution, I guess, when I look at it long term. Right. You know? Well, and, you know, you and I did a lot of that a handful of years ago. And then when I left, that kind of yep. um, stopped. And there's been other people that have tried to fill in that gap. Yep. So it's kind of um, retaking ownership of the fact that we were kind of the original pioneers of it. Yep. And, you know. And, was, and, and back to the kind of what I was saying, it's, it's hard because, you know, we've been out of, of it and it's like getting that – you know, people to understand like, hey, like we actually don't, we're talking about about this because it yeah. was kind of our baby, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, but back to everybody knows everything. I, I wish on social people would just listen a little bit more. Yeah. You know, we were seeing them on 22 Creedmoor um, Facebook page. And if you're not part of that, highly recommend it. You do have to answer the questions. Because I know. if you do not answer the questions. You do not get let into the group. You are not getting let into the group, mm -hmm. which is interesting because we're adding a couple hundred people a week, but... I'm like, some of these people I know are legit people. Just answer yes that you answer the questions. Well, it's that you agree to the terms yeah. of the group. Like, you're not going to be a jerk. Yeah. You know, and you're, you, you're going to keep you, it pretty clean. You're going to, you're not going to try and sell anything because those go against uh, exactly. Facebook standards and we will get shut down as a group in a hot second. And people so. need to understand like, hey, when you message me and say, hey, I'm going to post these bullets for sale or this barrel for sale. Could you please let me do that? I cannot let you do that. Yeah. Facebook will automatically take you off. So it's not me saying, yeah. no, no, you can't, you know, whatever. Well, and as um, you just added me recently again as an mm -hmm. admin on it. And so I've been, yep. you know, accepting people, but I've also been getting the notices. We do get notices from yep. Facebook. Like there have been posts that have been removed because they go against standards. And it's like, we're going to get shut down at yeah. some point. If <laughs> So quit doing that. <laughs> But the other thing is, uh, I really wish that community would listen a little more to what we were seeing. You know, we we had a guy on there um, um, a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. was 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 putting out like, "Hey, my bullets are doing this," or "I'm getting this weird grouping," and here's the speeds, and here's the barrel twist, and and I'm sitting here like, "Hey, it's because you're going too fast with this particular barrel." Yeah. You know, here's what your bullet's actually doing, and it's like. No, you know, everybody, nobody knows what they're talking about. You know, all these people giving you information that, um, you know, that, that they think they know what they're doing, but they don't actually know what they're doing. And I'm sitting here and I respond, I'm like, no, like, like actually, <laughs> like, this is really what's happening. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just. Well, it, and then how do you, how, uh, this is a question for me, I guess, too, but like, how do you reestablish yourself as a subject yeah. matter expert? Like, you have to reintroduce yourself as. Yeah. I've been doing this for a long time, but that's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle too, yep. right? Absolutely. Especially as it gains popularity. I mean, we thought it was gaining popularity back in 2019, early yeah. 2020, and it's way it more popular now. Quick. Yeah. And and we, you know, I, I think we've done some things uh, in the United States wise, like with Sports South and some distribution and stuff. Mm -hmm. that it's interesting to see the pockets of where that caliber is going. Where so do you see it popping we've up? We've got a lot of stuff in, and we, and we kind of, saw that early on but like um ohio michigan like kind of in that belt uh south dakota mm -hmm. um, not that makes sense you know a lot of predator hunters yeah. um are starting to uh, um to adopt it and a lot of people are trying to figure out like how to make it fur friendly or maybe it's not maybe furs aren't worth as much well, that, maybe it doesn't matter it wasn't you know? the whole that yeah wasn't why it was created <laughs> i don't know if you saw and it probably was it may or may not have been something we should have put on there. But if you look on our Instagram, we put on a reel and said, hey, this is the answer. Like, we always get asked, is it fur is it, friendly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, shooting a, a fox at like 70 yards and you can go find out for yourself <laughs> what you can say. And we posted it and we're like, hey, this Did that get depends. Like, do you consider down? this? No, down? it actually didn't. Wow. It was thermal, some thermal video that we got sent in mm -hmm. um, and people using our Texas ammo. And it was it's pretty enlightening. <laughs> well, I mean, the whole reason you started using it was to anchor a coyote yep. during a competition. That automatically means it's not for friendly. Not necessarily like you're blowing holes friendly. through it. <laughs> so it, it's been uh, it's been kind of fun to see that. So that's a big piece of uh, what we'll be working on um, going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Social. So one thing uh, when you're on the social side too, from messaging, um, you know, not not actually like messaging but the actual detail messaging 
Um, what do you expect when people, or how do I say this? It's, I have some struggle when we have people ask a lot of how do I buy this or technical questions or, mm-hmm. or things that are really related to customer service mm-hmm. relative than, you know, um, what's on the social or marketing side. Yeah. So what do you tell people like, you know, and it, it's fascinating to me that people will, will mess because I don't necessarily do that. Maybe that's, maybe I'm looking at this wrong, that people will instant message or shoot a Facebook message to somebody like, hey, what's the status on my order number one, two, three, four? Right. The people usually doing the social is not necessarily that place. But is that normal? I mean, is that something you see a lot? Um, I, hmm, from a personal standpoint, yeah. I can't imagine um, messaging somebody. Probably just because that's my yeah. like part of my profession, right? So yeah. I know. But yes, it is. I mean, the, we worked with um, one of my old clients uh, was a consumer goods product and the amount and like the average selling price of something was like thirteen dollars, right? Mm. So and it was sold to the masses. Yeah. Um and which I would which one? Um Can you talk about this it one? was yeah, <clears throat> actually they're actually going out of business oh, as so of this Friday. So <laughs> Okay. So <laughs> I stopped working with them about a year ago. But um they I would um schedule their social, but I wouldn't manage their messages. Their customer service mm. team did. And that's kind of how I run most of the stuff that I do for some of my other clients. Because I don't know the inner workings yeah. of most of their stuff and things. So I, I can't answer, you know, but I can, I can schedule something. But, um, but yes, there are a number of people that is pretty standard that will go. Because they know it's usually run by a person. Yeah. As opposed to you're going to call in and have to go through an automated system. Or if you chat in, it's a bot often, you know. So... I don't know. So maybe we should be working on improving that. Just, if you're messaging one of our co- companies right now asking about like, hey, where's the status of my order? We're probably not doing a great job responding. But to those, I don't but... know that it needs to be a customer service hub in that regard. Mm-hmm. I mean, the answer literally could be uh, email X person at horizonfirearms.com, yeah. you know. Yeah. So how do we, how do we uh, you know, in terms of going forward – how do you people expect us to connect um, with them, whether it be Facebook, Instagram? What does it look like for IOTA still? Or what, what are we doing there? I think we're still figuring that out. I mean, to me, and even five years ago, Horizon was always the easy one. Yep. It was always harder. Um, what's the story um, yep. for IOTA? What do people want to see? It is, it's a different audience. So yep. that's definitely the first part is identifying who the audience is in all of these channels. And obviously there's going to be some crossover, but – um, it's not an easy, yeah. it's not the same person from business to business, really. Well, that's what's really interesting about with IOTA and Stiller. Mm-hmm. You know, we really want to see uh, more product use or image or content yeah. from people that we can help support. Yep. And, um, you know. Well, so like Stiller, for example, and even IOTA, um, obviously the Horizon rifles utilize those products. But it, it'd be very, very self-serving if all you did on IOTA and Stiller were share Horizon rifles. Right. That's a piece of it. But you also sell to all of these other rifle manufacturers or individuals that are going to build their own stuff or shoot at competitions. So you'd be, be doing yourself a disservice yeah. to only share Horizon products. Hey, guys. So you're listening to the On the Horizon podcast. We can't go a full podcast without talking about Horizon Firearms. So when you're looking for your next custom rifle, be sure and check us out at horizonfirearms.com. We look forward to doing business with you. Now, back to the show. Anything else that we want to share in terms of Dream Team? And it was funny when I keep saying Dream Team, we basically formulated a specific marketing team this year. So instead of um, instead of seeing like uh, a, a one point person or, um, you know, a personality we've, we've got a very dedicated team mm-hmm. to horizon um that um to focus on kind of revamp um this next year which is also going to include i'll go ahead and say this include some e-com mm-hmm. um some plays and so uh the way i'm trying to think about it in my head is like casper outdoors Amazon, I think I can say that, Casper is there's Amazon style. So like a centralized place. Yeah, a central hub. Um, for... to, to provide um, like a location a little bit easier for not only consumers, but dealers to go mm-hmm. um, to order the products. And then um, also trying to provide 
more content and images and things to the dealers who are, who are selling yeah. our, our products. Um, trying to think what else you got, Kat? What are you thinking? I don't know yeah. what I'm allowed to talk about. No, you are. You, well, come on. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you an opportunity here. So um, My big focus is honestly just reengaging the community. Yeah. Um, sharing information, you know, picking your brain and sharing that out with the masses um, and what that looks like from a – I mean, when was the last time you sent out an email newsletter? Yeah, it's been a bit. Yeah. It's been so a bit. So it's literally my, – my focus is just – re-engaging in all of those ways with the consumers. Um, yeah. I'd be curious to know, you know, I, when you gave me the tour of here today yeah. and you were showing me some rifle projects, I still knew the names of those people, you know, so kind of re-engaging with some of those people. Yeah, that's, been, and, that, that's been an interesting deal. Um, you know, we've kind of changed a little bit this last season or whatever on mm -hmm. our custom side. So we've yeah. got so much of the core rifle which you were involved right, with right. Uh, and some new stuff coming out there. Um, but the, the custom rifle process has been more defined and, and I mean, I would say even more exclusive than it's yeah. been in the past. And so we've got some really cool projects. Um, that what's interesting though, uh, and, and we'll see, we need to start sharing that more for, yes. for ideas, but yeah. you know, some of the stuff we're doing now, it's, they're a lot more difficult <laughs> than they've probably ever been. So it's been kind of fun to see the consumer side really ratchet up. Yeah. You know, what is custom. Did you ever figure out how to inlay gold into the fluting? No. That is something that has still been very, very, very difficult. So, no. But we did figure out how to do gold in a stock, which was a little easier, right? So shaving gold for like into a... Oh, so stock. not just like embedding the gold coin, but No, actual, but like okay. actually actually putting it in we've tried a whole bunch of different styles of, of wood and those are the mm -hmm. projects that it's super super hard to you know you, you run this balance by doing the custom and making sure it's done right mm -hmm. and it taking x amount of time that is somewhat unidentifiable right versus trying to deliver to somebody on a, on a certain schedule it's really really hard um, you know, when you add color case harden and, oh, I need this special kind of wood that yeah. came from X, Y, Z, the wood, the wood guns are tough. Well, and I noticed, <laughs> I mean, I would say when I first worked with Horizon, in my four years, we did maybe four or five wood stocks. Yeah. And in the last three years, I'd say um, since the Horizon Origin gun. Yeah. That was kind of the precipice for now for like. I mean, you do a ton of them. I, I mean, and relatively speaking. But when we're trying to figure out, like, is, is that process cause it's super unique? Mm -hmm. Is that process something we need to figure out how to mainstream, or is it something that's just going to be, you know, unique to it? Yeah. Because I think what we're seeing in the market is um, carbon is really nice. It's really cool. It's really mm -hmm. usable. It's you know whatever. But it was the same thing we saw in archery. It's kind of came and then everything became carbon. Yeah, yeah, became yeah. Carbon everywhere, and then people starting now finally to question, like, do I really? I really want a five pound, 300 PRC. Like that, that's just miserable. <laughs> that you know? sounds terrible. If, yeah. if people go back and listen to the podcast we did with, with Dakota and, um, um, when we were doing the fanatic podcast yeah. on, on that side, he, he talks about how much that they like hate testing those rifles and drawing straws and the disappointment in the I shooters. I can imagine. Oh yeah. He's like the disappointment when a guy comes in and sees that like his job today is a rack of, <laughs> <laughs> five pound 300 prcs and I, I get it that thing is is brutal and so i think we're seeing the st hopefully we're seeing stuff go back to and carbon stock that's great i get it yeah but you know still you know i think that that really plays to to horizon well with all the crazy fluting um mm -hmm. and everything we're doing there and then i honestly think just like you're seeing um this is kind of a funny parallel but all the 90s style pants and oh. stuff that everybody's wearing. And yes. like, I mean, I can't, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Especially having a teenager. Just, I'm so thankful my daughter is not into any of that. Okay, um, she so, is well, like it, a boot cut jeans and t shirt with a hoodie sweatshirt kind of girl all day long. <laughs> um, but the, the styles that you see now, I'm like, I, I just can't. I can't. I'm going to stop. Well, the question there, but, though is so. When is all the 2000 stuff, you know, when we were in college time yeah. frame, when is that going to be the next trend? Because that's really probably, 
like your daughter's age. So it'd be like what mom was wearing was cool again. And I think oh, we're seeing that with guns, which is really unique. Yeah. It's, it's like uh, there seems to be a, a section of people that have a memory of what granddad used mm-hmm. or like maybe granddad or dad let them use their first gun. So it's give me a blue barrel and a wood stock. Um, and then to some extent on the customs, we're seeing wood stock, but mm-hmm. carbon barrel, which is that's an interesting it is combo. Interesting because it's, huh. so then what does it becomes, that even look like? I can honestly can't really wrap my head around what that would look like. That seems like yeah, those two things wouldn't fit together. I mean, they probably look cool, but they look super cool. But the why is always yeah, you know, the question. It's yeah, like, why oh, are you going to go carbon to try and light, cut weight, weight and on a eleven, you know, on a yeah. nine ten pound? How is yeah. that even balanced though? Really strange, but okay. it looks super cool. <laughs> <laughs> Super All cool. right. So, but huh. anyway, it's been it's been interesting. Now you're also working on some packaging designs and stuff for us as well, I believe. Mm-hmm. So trying to revamp the experience when you're getting the Horizon Pro, well, Casper Outdoors. Product. So here's what I like about some of the stuff we're working on now, um, and I've said it obviously even in this podcast, but you know these are things we were talking about five years ago, and yeah. I I always got a lot of pushback because I'm like, we are this. Crazy custom rifle company. Why is our packaging experience not match yeah. that? And it was always, in my mind, too, not cheap, but yeah. cheap relatively yeah. um, speaking. And so I, I like that I'm able to, I'm actually just not, what's the saying? Ask for forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> I'm kind of just going with it this time around where I'm just going to go with what I think needs well, to happen. And then there we go. you might that's be fine. mad at I'm me just later. Close but... my ears and let it, let it happen. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't have to answer to you at this point, right? And, and You're the... going to have to answer to right. it. But not me. Well, and the thing about it is it's like you finally get to the volume, right? Right. Yeah. You know, and I think the core series rifles are really, for us, kind of an eye opener of that piece. And it's always, it's always mm-hmm. been interesting to kind of Dip your toe in so that. So say we tried road. that, and I think that this is this time around is um, we're doing it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, you see the facility and the, and the infrastructure we're putting into yeah. to doing that, but still trying not to lose the horizon flare. Yeah, you have say. to still be true to your core. Yeah. Oh wait. Uh, oh, I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So when you look at when you look at cat right now, what is on your horizon? is on my horizon yeah and that could be that could be a personal thing that could be a wildcat marketing and it's wildcatmarketing.com you have a website no. you don't have a website i do have yet. a website oh what is yeah, it yeah yeah well it's a whole thing um before you say it you can't steal more than a couple hours of cat's time a week because <laughs> we got the rest of it but <laughs> well it's wildcat but it's wildcatmktg.com because wildcat marketing all spelled out was already taken so I have that. to say I'm disappointed a little bit you didn't use KAT. But I, uh, so Just a little bit. But you know why I picked Wildcat Marketing, right? Tell us about it. Well, you know, I don't know if y'all are familiar with this little term in the hunting uh the shooting industry, a wildcat cartridge. Kind I'm of a like, little, you know, kind of like the 22 Creed more. But that so when I was deciding to kind of go out on my own, I could not think of uh, company name. Nothing felt right. And I didn't want to use my name. I was trying to think geographically around where I live. Nothing felt right. Um, but then wildcat marketing. So what's, what's the precipice of a wildcat cartridge? You are taking an industry standard cartridge Mm -hmm. and you're tweaking something about it to enhance performance in a certain way. That is what I, my goal is with my marketing company, right? So I'm taking industry standard marketing practices, what you're doing with your company. And I'm saying like, how can we tweak what you're doing or what, what else can we try to increase performance? That's awesome. So that is why I came up with wildcat marketing. So how many people that you work with, especially in like the Oregon or like the, (laughs) yeah, I mean like when you go to the feed store, nobody asks really. No, I think it's because partly they just assume it has to do with my name. Oh, Uh, But that was why I didn't have it with a K because I didn't want anybody to assume that it's like, I'm crazy. I'm not wild. Oh. I'm not going to be wild with your marketing dollars, you know? That's also very clever. Um, so well I didn't, thought out. I, I purposefully chose to stay away from the K, although my husband would say the same thing. That you should have done the yeah, K? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but on my website, I do have this whole explanation and on my LinkedIn too of like why I chose Wildcat Marketing. And it's funny because a few of my best friends who are not from, well, they have no background in firearms at yeah. all or hunting and, and they think what I do is like, so weird to them, but they were like, you should maybe not really lay so heavily into, um, 
the firearms piece because I have a huge on like the definite like de um, dictionary definition of wildcat on my website. Like that's the first thing you see. And they're like, you should maybe not do that. And I'm like, no, any customer or any client of mine that has a problem with it should probably not be my client. Yeah, then. it's your, like, it's it your is, first filter. It, yeah, exactly. And nobody has had an issue with it. But that is, and I have a giant um, gun safe in the background of my Zoom calls. So, you know. <laughs> Double filter. That's filter <laughs> <Exactly>. two. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. So back to what's on your horizon then? So we know the, we know the origin story a little bit there, Wildcat. Yeah. yeah. What's um, next? I think, I think what I want to do on my horizon is... Um, you know, dive deeper with fewer clients. Okay. So, you know, when fact, I first started my company, I hated saying no because it was terrifying. Like, well, and also I started it technically like two weeks before COVID shut the world down. And so I was like, I'm going to have to get my old job back. I've doomed my, <laughs> doomed my family. <laughs> like we're going into financial ruin. And so I would just say yes to everything. And um, I've spent kind of the last two and a half years. I just had my three-year anniversary. Uh, my wild cat anniversary, as I call it. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Um but really kind of um my my word for the year this year was deliberate. So I'm okay. trying to be deliberate with my time, with who I work with. Um So is that when you pick your word for the year is that for yourself or is that for the company? It it's kind of one and the same. Um you know, one year That was, happens when you're entrepreneurial. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> one year was um growth, one year was focus, this year is deliberate like Focus was didn't work, so I'm being deliberate <laughs> with my time. <laughs> yeah, no focus, and now is yeah. yeah. So I really want to like dive deeper in with a few or larger clients. That you being one of them, and a couple others that are kind of in the general outdoor space, not necessarily the hunting space. Um, but then also really focus on my little local clients, um, helping awesome. them in any way I can. So well, and, that, and that's probably fun because you're like being involved in the community with your business. Yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, Kat, I very much appreciate you being on the podcast today. It's yes. been enjoyable. I'm glad. I, I, I like to finally get to show you kind of behind the scenes what we've been well, working yeah, on Well, yeah, because I mean, we've, we never stopped talking, right? right? After I left um, and you're always describing all of the changes yeah. happening. So it's really fun to see it firsthand. But it's in, in our super wonky building with... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hidden yes. rooms everywhere. Well, I did, when you were giving me the tour this morning, I was like, okay, yeah, I remember you trying to explain this, like, side staircase through this door, and now hey, it but, all makes sense. But now we have a giant, like, 13-foot logo in the front, so people actually yeah. know where to find us, so it, it's been kind of fun. But, again, very much appreciate it, and looking forward to all the things we've got going for... Yes this year and next and so it's gonna be super fun it's gonna be a wild ride it will be it'll be good yeah. it'll be good i'm looking forward to Me it too. guys we appreciate you listening to this episode of on the horizon be sure and go below and like and subscribe and leave in the comments some things that you'd like us to talk about people you'd like us to interview and as always we appreciate it we'll catch you later